Fanboys typically ignore facts, they ignore objectivity, and most of the time they also ignore rational discussions because if you automatically assume that that person is a fanboy, then they'll just resort to calling you a fanboy for the opposite team. And that gets no one anywhere at that point. If you're in that debate with that person, you should just stop. You're never going to get anywhere. You're never going to influence a fanboy that he or she is a fanboy. And that's like rule number one of being a fanboy. If you can't be influenced of your inherent subject activity for no reason whatsoever, then you're probably one. Look, it's okay to prefer one over the other. Even if you want to extend this to graphics cards or motherboard manufacturers, if, if I purchase primarily Corsair products, does that make me a Corsair fanboy? Okay, maybe from the outside it might appear that way, but maybe I just appreciate the reliability of Corsair products or just how aesthetically pleasing some of their products are. So being a loyal fan does not necessarily mean that you're a fanboy. And people use fanboy in a derogatory sense as more or less being that blind and inherently subjective person who doesn't rely on facts. So to bring this one home, if I today am prepared to tell somebody that I prefer Intel CPUs over AMD CPUs, then I better also be prepared to back up my statement with supporting arguments. Maybe I prefer to just play video games. That's all I do on my gaming PC. And because of that, and I understand inherently that Intel has higher frame rates due to the fact that Intel's been refreshing the same architecture for four or five years. And so developers have had longer times to optimize games with Intel CPUs versus Ryzen, which is a relatively immature platform by comparison, and also the fact that Intel CPUs overclock a bit higher, there's my argument, right? Or that could be one of the few arguments that I throw at that person who might otherwise assume that I'm a fanboy. That's called supporting your argument with just, you know, facts. And that's what fanboys don't tend to do. They tend to ignore facts and just spew crap that has no basis in science, no basis on any of the channels that I look up to and that, that I feed off of, right, when we're exchanging info and we're talking about how we're benchmarking products. We don't wanna do anything wrong. We don't wanna give you guys the wrong impression or lead you to the wrong conclusions. And often what fanboys will do is come to a conclusion that is not based on anything we've ever presented on our channels. And that's exactly what happened with a viewer of mine in my last video, which you can check out right here. In a nutshell, I discuss how to upgrade your B350 BIOS in order to make it compatible with Zen Plus for the 2600 up through the 2700X. I demonstrated the process, but I also pointed out that you can't just buy a B350 board and expect, you know, the Zen Plus CPUs to work out of the box. The motherboard was obviously manufactured before Zen Plus was, unless it was built yesterday. And because of that, you're going to need a Ryzen 1, so a Summit Ridge CPU, first in order to boot into the BIOS and then flash it with M-Flash, Q-Flash, and whatever, usually on a thumb drive. Um, now I understand that AMD has kits for these things. You can, I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but you can usually contact AMD. They'll send you a little dummy CPU, but it'll let you boot into your BIOS and that's all you really need. And then you can swap that out for your Zen Plus CPU and you're good to go. I'm not sure if they're still doing that. A few people pointed that out on Twitter. Um, so let me know in the comments if that's still the case and I will pin your comment. But that's honestly beside the point. See, this viewer took what I said in the video out of context because I pointed out that you would need a Ryzen 1 CPU in order to upgrade your BIOS on a B350 motherboard, he defaulted to the typical AMD is trash statement by saying, quote, AMD is so garbage. Okay, well, that's basically trash. You literally need to buy two CPUs just to set the correct motherboard BIOS so the one that you actually want to play on works. Trash fodder. <laughs> Intel will always be on top of the CPU market, and Nvidia will always be on top of the GPU market. Yeah, uh, we're gonna ignore the second half of his comment. We might save that for the end and just address it briefly, but uh, the, f the first half is what I really want to focus on. That's the meat of this video because his statement assumes that AMD is the one responsible for all of these BIOS updates that should be by default on all motherboards when they launch because motherboards are supposed to account for technology that's not you know, manufactured yet, right? So a year or two down the line, these motherboards are supposed to, they're supposed to support these CPUs out of the box, basically. Um, and so that's, that's his first error in judgment. Um, also, this is not something that's isolated to just AMD. Uh, ignoring the fact that you could contact AMD more than likely and get that dud CPU to, to upgrade your BIOS, 
Intel has done the same thing. I mean, if we look just back at the, the, the last generation here with Kaby Lake, in order to run a Kaby Lake CPU on a Z170 board, for example, you had to flash the Z170 BIOS. And this would be a problem for those who did not already have a Skylake CPU on hand, right? You would have to get a dud Skylake CPU or just buy one off of Amazon, a really cheap Celeron, for example, flash it, and then you could put that Kaby Lake CPU in that socket. But not only that, see, the, the viewer first off is blaming the wrong person, and they really there's no one really to blame for this. I mean, the fact that you can even use uh, a newer gen CPU on an old motherboard should be a blessing. You should be thankful for that, regardless of how many hoops you have to jump through. The fact that we can run Zen Plus on a B350 board should be a good thing. You know, it, it's not something you expect to work perfectly right out of the box because Zen Plus wasn't invented when the B350 motherboard was manufactured. But the viewer first off leads his comment with the statement, AMD is so garbage and that's how you can usually tell when you have a fanboy in your midst when they make these just egregious claims and then proceed to try to back up their argument with stuff that's not even true um, that's when you know they're either severely misinformed or they're just so blind to their fanboyism that they're not willing to argue with you know logic i sincerely hope mr green is trolling all of us but i have a pretty strong feeling he is not and that's unfortunate but the fact of the matter is many trolls out there exist you guys know this not just in the youtube comment sections but also on on forums like reddit reddit's plugged with fanboys but you can also find logical and, and well-supported arguments on both sides not just in the cpu market but also in the graphics card market between nvidia and amd kind of tying into what mr green talked about in the second half of his comment he says nvidia will always be on top in the market for graphics cards and Intel will always be on top for, you know, CPUs, blah, blah, blah. And kind of inherently correct in the sense that these companies do have a substantial market share in their respective categories. Uh, but I know that's not what he meant when he said that. He was more or less saying that they're going to be the dominant, better company always. And when you go about making, you know, a statement like that about how it's always going to be this way, they're just arguing more or less from their emotional states than they are from their logical ones. So that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video. I'm still benchmarking myself. That's why I kind of just threw this in there as an in-between. I want you guys to be aware that people out there are going to argue with you for the just for the sake of arguing um, and I do that a lot too to be honest but uh, oftentimes it's because I want to challenge their you know, their positions like why do you feel the way you do explain it back it up you know don't insult me just 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 throw facts at me and I can at least appreciate facts if they're verified and I try to do the same in my videos I try to show you guys exactly what I'm doing so that you can go and replicate these uh, scenarios on your own to either verify or deny what I'm showing you in my graphs and and that's something that I expect you all to do if you have the free time um, is to at least you know cross-reference my benchmarks or other people's benchmarks on YouTube and elsewhere with other benchmarks so that you can get a you know just an encompassing idea of what the general trend is for this particular launch so my R5 vs i5 video will be coming very soon um, you guys steer clear of the, of the fanboys they're out there right now and they are uh, they're stalking their prey they're waiting for that one guy to fall for the troll and then They'll unleash the fanboyism. Take care, you guys. I will see you in the next one. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. Subscribe button. You guys know what to do. Bell notification icon. All that good stuff. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.